Hello everybody, I am Blue Noise Easy, and finally, Skullgirls Encore has finally made its way to Xbox 360 Live Arcade. And today is a pretty exciting day because finally, uh, the 360 players have been finally able to get their hands on both Squiggly and Big Band at once. Uh, the PS3 players as well as Steam players are actually going to have to uh, download Big Band separately, but for the 360 players, we get everything at once. So, uh, also, sorry for the poor quality in the video as you've seen beforehand. I'm still working on getting a brand new uh, desktop PC so I can actually do better recordings with my HDP, uh, HDP VR Gaming Edition 2. So, yeah, you'll see more of that uh, with proper recording later on down the line of this game. And hopefully I can do a week of and do some online play and post some stuff on YouTube. Anyways, down to the story. So, the 360 players have been waiting for this uh, newest update to the entire Skullgirls uh, game for over six months now and we actually been very very patient some uh, I've actually seen who was actually growing impatient and then there are some who actually switched over from the Xbox 360 version over to the PS3 and Steam version which is highly understandable a lot of people have been waiting for this game for a long time to hop on the shores of 360 a lot of people were patient who actually eventually became impatient and just decided to spend an additional hundred bucks on a uh, PS3 or just to get a free Steam account and just um, put in about 14 bucks of Skullgirls if that's correct them out but regardless of the point those who actually stuck around and waited for the 360 version you guys are really patient just like how I was um, but Lab Zero has gone through a lot to get this game up on board with the 360 version it took them over six months just to, just to get this edition on board mainly because Microsoft has had has really poor handling of making sure that um, updates to, towards games are actually properly put on the uh, marketplace but at the same time, Lab Zero has actually gone through a lot with themselves, going through Reverge Labs, so you know Autumn Games, going through Konami, and then having to be their, uh, having to have their game delisted just to get their sales with Marvelous uh, HQ, I think. And uh, and it actually, you know, they actually worked really well to get this game really down pat, and they didn't give up on us. They didn't give up on anyone really. They just wanted to make sure that this fighting game was well respected and well played and and well loved by all the people who actually enjoyed the game itself. Um, but yeah, it took them a long time though. But with this DLC, for those who haven't actually downloaded it yet as well, you have to do a title update first, and then do the secondary, which is the required co uh, compatibility pack, which will give you just over like 800 megabytes, close to a gig, of uh, getting everything, including Squiggly and um, Big Band and all the other content, such as their story mode and stages and whatnots. Um, also, some notable changes to some characters. Uh, one of them, uh, uh, one of the two that I saw was uh, Philia's uh, Shorty Yukin um, actually got some major changes. Instead of doing one hit, if you do her uh, her high punch version, it does three hits. Her mid punch does two, and then, of course, her low does one. Another character I saw with some small changes was uh, my favorite character who I play as 100% of the time, and that's Miss Fortune. Um, Miss Fortune, if anyone remember, in the original version before Encore, she had uh, two launchers, actually. She had a... Uh, she had a forward, a crouching forward high punch, and she had a standing high kick uh, launcher. Uh, in this version, her high kick version was replaced with a spinning bird kick-like move, or a move kind of resembling Orchid's spinning, uh, spinning kick. Um, if anyone knows who those characters are, of anyone who's actually seen those characters do those moves, but yes, that's what it's actually resembling that of. But it's actually a really good move because um, after you uh, pretty much launch your characters on your opponent's back into the ground, you can actually combo into her spinning bird kick into one of her super arts, as I actually call it, one of her uh, special moves. And it's really good. It's a really good move. There are some notable changes with other characters as well. Um, one of them, uh, one of the other characters of the two that I also saw was. Um, uh, I think it was Valentine. Uh, yeah, it was Valentine. She actually uh, had a big change in her speed. Her dash is is a lot faster than her original dash. If anyone remember as well in the original version, her dash was pretty slow, but in this one, her dash is a lot faster. So she can actually pretty much um, play a, a lot of um, a lot of rush down uh, with against her opponent. So yeah, there are some noticeable changes with a lot of the characters. You just gotta really put your time in to actually seeing it. I'm actually loving the content of this game. It's there's a Marie three. 100% which is crazy hard some brand new stages brand new music and of course um, they actually add in a lot of new audio well you know when characters going up against each other you know they actually respond to each other which is pretty cool though so I actually like that 
And, uh, and of course, uh, there's also another character, hopefully, that the 360 players will be getting their hands on soon. And that's Fukua, who is the palace swap and pretty much a character to be made fun of, of uh, DiCaprio from Ultra Street Fighter 4. If not, it's just nothing more than a palace swap just to make a joke out of. But eventually, a lot of the people actually liked Fukua, and they're, they're still deciding, Lab Zero to be more precise, uh, if they want to keep Fukua in the game. And also, uh, if anyone has saw the April Fool's uh, trailer as well for Fukua, the, we actually saw a little bit of animation for Eliza, who was supposed to be the third uh, DLC character for uh, Skullgirls Encore Edition. And uh, Brain Drain, the, the character who she hovers over Painwell in her opening animation, said that um, pretty much she wasn't going to be available for another few months, which means that we might be able to see Eliza as a uh, as a playable DLC character within the next few months of uh, us playing Skullgirls, within, of course, within the, um, the development of um, Eliza as well. And so hopefully we'll actually be able to see Eliza as a playable character very soon. If that small piece of information said that um, we have to wait uh, just a few more months before she can uh, as a playable DLC character, then hey, uh, I'm ready for her. Also, we will hopefully we'll be able to see uh, Beowulf as well because he's another character who we actually have to wait on as well. We haven't heard much about Beowulf at all other than Eliza seen from the uh, salty uh, salty cupcake streams. Um, other than that. You know, this is a good run for Skullgirls now. Now that everyone and all consoles and whatnots alike have now actually been able to get their hands on the game at its fullest extent. So yes, I'm actually excited about this and hopefully we'll get more content and not have to wait a long time like we had to do with Skullgirls Encore initially. So thank you Lab Zeros. And uh, oh, and one last thing: if anyone has had any problems with your save data being corrupted after you've done the complete DLC update regarding Big Band and Squiggle, please let me know in the comment section below. I actually want to see what, if I can uh, if I can actually get into that small piece of information. So uh, thank you for everyone for watching. Please leave a comment, like, subscribe, and thank you Lab Zero for working hard on your uh, awesome fighters.